Wales have been washed out by the Melbourne monsoon. Australia, ride the storm for a second win in two weeks. Hello amateurs and welcome back to the channel. Hit subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any of the rest of the summer series. Now, both teams had things to prove in this game. Australia, a new group under a new coach, got the win last week, but there's lots of areas for them to work on. And Wales haven't won in eight games. They're coming together. They're looking stronger week by week at the moment, but they really needed to get a result in this one. Now, let's talk about that weather. The amount of rain coming down in that first half, splashing around. It looked like handling conditions were super tough for both teams. But Wales actually started really well, dominating a lot of territory, moving through phases, spending a lot of time in Australia's territory. But that only led to the first try of the game by Dalgunu for Australia. Kellaway got the ball almost on his own line, did an audacious kick from there, got a great bounce to be fair but he got up so well tapped the ball back inside to the supporting Fraser McWright who found Dalgunu on the outside to gallop over for a length of the field try and 7-0 to the Wallabies at that stage did not feel fair um, they got another penalty soon afterwards and then can win it after Wales had dominated again really in terms of temperature and possession uh, Cam Winnett dropped a high ball. Actually, I'm not even sure if he got to it. I think it maybe got caught in the wind and he's almost ran into his own players in front of him. However, Gordon, the Australian scrum half, just dinked it through with the foot, run through, picked it up, sidestepped through and it was 17-0 again against the run of play. Really, Australia absolutely lethal when they got their chances. But Wales would just be like, what is going on here? How has this happened? But... Wales do have one absolute trump card at the moment. It was it worked a load of times last week and it worked again today as they got a line out maul, a massive maul. Like their mauls at the moment, when they when they break and go through, they look absolutely irresistible. And that to, led to a try from Dowie Lake for 17-7. But, and this is an absolute coach killer, they gave a penalty away straight from the restart, didn't resource the ruck properly, got turned over and you lose three points of the seven you just won like immediately. So 20 points to seven. And my gosh, like you normally expect in weather like this, the scoring to be, you know, three, six, nine, but it's 20 points to seven now. Uh, and about 25 minutes gone, like really high scoring game in awful, awful weather conditions. Big moment in the game came up next with Archie Griffin carrying the ball in. Archie Griffin, who I thought showed remarkable uh, kind of resilience and energy throughout the game and I'll speak more about him at the end he carried a ball in to Salakai Lotto who uh, whose shoulder hit Griffin right on the jaw this is went for a yellow card and review and a good thing here that happens in the Australian uh, stadiums is that the referee can be heard by the crowd they put him out on the loudspeaker so you can hear exactly what the referee is saying and as I understand it that makes to a much more engaging experience for the fans in the stadium they really know what's going on anyway Salakai Lotto off for a correct call yellow card the commentators at this time were like wow this is a brave call by Wales to go for a line out and a, and a catch and drive and I'm thinking Australia have just had their biggest forward yellow carded and the line-up all and drive was going superbly well anyway. This seems like the obvious choice to me. And and it turned out that way. Dory Loke got over for his second try of the game, 20 points to 14. But this, again, uh, Wales just shot themselves in the foot. They've done so much good work in this first half, but they gave another penalty away straight from the kickoff. Exactly the same. Holding on. They just didn't get to the ruck in time. I mean, it's criminal, absolutely criminal. I can only imagine Warren Gatlin was going crazy about this. So, and again, and, and a, a yellow card. So it wastes another minute, 90 seconds off the clock as well. All of that. So it's now 23-14. They were within a score. Now they're back to nine points and it's half time. And Salakai Lotto will be coming back on soon. It's such a massive momentum shift just before half time. However, Wales did come out in the second half and, again, played some really good rugby. They just kept moving forward onto the ball. They kept managing to maintain momentum. And a lot of this was due to Australia being really passive in terms of line speed in their defence. And I mean really passive. Uh, they clearly had a tactic here where they were going to try and concede zero line breaks 
But what this does rely on is that when you get numbered up, when you get maybe two on one, you have got to put in massive shots. Uh, otherwise, Wales will just keep, or the opposition, Wales in this case, will just keep moving forward, keep getting territory. And it just seemed inevitable when Liam Williams walked over for a try in the 48th minute after, I don't know, 20 plus phases, I think. So 23 21 now, and it was game on. Now, talking about that defence, Australia did on occasion put in some massive shots, some real big ones. Uh, a lot of the Plumtree got whacked a couple of times that I remember. So when they did get that right, when they did get the physicality right, that defensive system was working. But when they couldn't find those big shots, it definitely wasn't. Uh, Liam Williams gave a needless penalty away shortly afterwards, though. And again, this is just, I mean, it didn't need to happen. He drove, drove through a, a ruck and took somebody off, off their feet beyond the ruck. Absolutely a penalty, which went to a line out, but Australia knocked it on somehow. And then Williams, again, so much in this game at the moment, tried to get a turnover, but he knocked it on, which led to a scrum five for Australia. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out there. I think Wales deliberately gave away a free kick at this scrum because uh, the Australians were still on top probably in the scrum at this point. And I think the, the early drive that they got penalised for, I think was so obvious that I think they did it deliberately, knowing that Australia would then have to go to a, either a line-out catch and drive or a tap uh, tap and go. They did not want to be defending a five-metre scrum. In any case, Alan Alatoa, one of my favourite names in world rugby, Triple Al, drove over for his first ever test try. That took it to 28-21. Uh, and importantly, the conversion missed, so still within a score. But Wales continued to attack well. And Australia continued to be really passive on defence. So, I mean, the thing is, with that passive defence, it can then lead to the opposition getting really confident with what they're doing ball in hand. And that is what it looked like for Wales. They were they were moving the ball confidently. The weather, by the way, in the second half had really cleared up. The rain had stopped and it suddenly all those handling areas had gone that were sort of in the first half. And then Wales' scrum came to town as well. Australia went for um, a second shove on a Wales ball. They weathered it and then came back and absolutely destroyed the Australian scrum. Alatoa had come on uh, at half-time for Tupu. He's, de he's definitely not as good a scrummager. Definitely not. However, the next big break in the game came in a 68th minute and in an absolute carbon copy of Chesson Colby's score for last week, which I don't think I'd seen for the you know the reasonable recent past almost exactly the th same thing happened again today Australia had a penalty kicked a touch Liam Williams as I mentioned so in this game in absolutely every asset tried to keep it in which he did uh, and Dalgunu uh, ran through and caught the ball and scored and that was that was almost felt like oh my goodness can Wales find another way to lose this game that really felt like the end, to be honest. 33-21, 10 minutes to go. And with that real sort of sucker punch, gut punch to them, it, it seemed very hard for them. But they got a half charge kicked out, box kicked down. Chris Shunza getting, the, getting hands on ball there. And it fell to Rio Dyer, who finished incredibly well down a very short, short side. He powered over, actually, to score. And the conversion from the touchline meant it was now a five-point game. And absolutely game on. Absolutely game on again. But Wales lost two lineouts. They had two good entries, lost two lineouts on their own throw. And then deep towards the end of the game, they were penalised for being ahead of their own kicker and not retreating, technically loitering, which has now been sort of brought back into the laws. I did a really good podcast last week with the World Rugby Head of Laws. Uh, which I'll link up here, which talks about this whole process of how the DuPont law came into place and how it's now been removed. That led to a penalty about on the Welsh 10 metre line, centre field. And I just thought, well, that's kickable. That's going to give them an eight point lead. Tom Wright did not think that. Tom Wright took a quick tap penalty and I was screaming at the at the screen going, oh no, no, you've just ruined it. Like if you get turned over, et cetera, et cetera. Wells have then got another chance, but... Wales infringed again, much closer to the post this time. The penalty this time was kicked for 36-28 and the game was done. For Australia, they took their chances. They're building a good sort of structure and understanding, I think, 
basic building blocks to how they want to play. And they're two from two in this series. And I think you can get a lot from winning games. There's a lot more to come from them. I think there's a lot more to come from Joe Schmidt as a coach with this group. But I think he's starting very, very foundational. And the wins are the wins. That's how it goes. Wales gave away some really cheap scores in this game. In fact, if you look at them, almost all of them, really. Uh, and that's not being harsh on Australia. They were really good at executing their skills and getting the ball and um, and finishing the chances that they got. But a lot of it came from Wales' errors. Wales did have some good play, but this is now nine defeats on the spin for them. Um, for them, they've got to try and put the results aside and continue to look at the positives that they've got in a lot of their performances because both these last two games, there were tons of good positive moments. So it's tough though. It's really tough. Shout out for Archie Griffin, who ended up playing the full 80 as a tight head prop, as a young tight head prop. Um, I think last week when he played 74, he said that was the longest he played since he was at university. So he's gone another six minutes further in this game. Well done. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, on a losing effort for Wales. OK, that's what I think. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.